Hey guys, Mike here. So we definitely have a crazy week coming up with a boatload of earnings. Now that earnings season has kicked back off, more economic data, some red folder news, which we'll talk about. But of course, the elephant in the room is what's going on in the Middle East and stuff. And I know a lot of you have emailed me, you put in the comments, I see you talking to each other, either talking to me. And it's one of those things where, you know, I personally unsubscribe to multiple sites and even a couple YouTube channels. Because I don't subscribe to many, they were pushing this whole World War III narrative. Like, do I think there's going to be World War III? First of all, nobody can answer that. Second of all, you know, you can, they can give you their opinion, sure. But anybody that was pushing that, trying to scare the brakes off people, I would have nothing to do with those people or their sites or anything else because they're just trying to get clicks, okay? But, you know, you got to think about it from a, a wider view and say, guys, I mean, they, they don't say the next World War would pretty much end, end us all for no reason. I mean, it would be catastrophic, national humanitarian level. But even economic, it would be disastrous, okay? And so I hate to see that going on. I don't talk about the Middle East because I'm not an expert in the Middle East, right? And I don't think the United States can fix that problem. We try to fix everybody's problems, and, you know, that's just not the case. And as long as we don't put our troops in the middle of that, I'll just kind of continue to keep my mouth shut. When we start putting troops in the middle of it, that's a whole different ball game, okay? You know, let me know what you think in the comments. But again, is it going to affect the market? You, I mean, we'll see how the futures open up. It, it'll probably create volatility to begin. Wars like that, same way as Russia, Ukraine, saw a little sell down and then everything went on, right? And we'll talk about some stocks to watch out for because unfortunately, wars create money, right? It creates millionaires and billionaires, and that's the way it is. Uh, so we'll talk about that as well. So yes, it will create volatility in the short term, uh, assuming it doesn't escalate into something crazy, right? Um, and again, as long as we keep our, I, I'm a firm believer in keeping our men and women out of that. But again, you may have a different opinion. So let me know down in the comments what you think about that. Uh, now, before we get into the actual charts, which we're going to get into a bunch of them right here, please hit that thumbs up because it'll help people find this video and think about subscribing. If you like a finance channel who doesn't try to talk over your head and make themselves seem all smart and stuff. Now, looking at the charts, obviously we might gap down tomorrow. We'll start to see how the futures play out. We won't know until the morning, right? And we look at the S&P, it was funny, we were talking about this the other day, right? The importance of not taking out that high to the left, right? Just left it at almost equal highs, right below it. And of course, what happened? We said, oh, all this liquidity down below. Well, boy, they definitely took that liquidity down below, did they not? I mean, they took that and then some, I think a lot more than what a lot of people would expect. I mean, including myself for one day. But, you know, when you look at this right here, it's just sitting there, equal low, sitting on what? The 50 moving average. So we were retesting that 50 moving average on the S&P, and it's been a, quite a long time since we've done it. You know, the real question is, are they going to try to take out the lows to the left, right, and come down into this demand zone right here, which would be a nice liquidity grab before moving back up to grab internal liquidity? Are we going to move up first, right, maybe close that gap and stuff uh, before heading back down? And we do have a big weekly expected range right here ranging anywhere from 5022 to a 5230 right so a little over 200 points they're expecting this week in this move so again it's going to be volatile like i said a lot of earnings coming out this week which we'll go over and stuff uh, a lot of the sectors look like they're trying to roll over or whatever but again we'll, we'll see what happens this week again on the hourly time frame you could tell that is a descending channel right look at the cues where are we at still holding the 50 moving average after all of that right there it seems like we've done a lot more sell down of that but it's the third time it has held the 50 moving average now and we're really zoom into this what it's done is we've just sit here and held the same range which i'm gonna highlight in just a minute but again, you know, this one's held up better because than the S&P, because why? Because they started moving back into the MAG7, right? And they've held up. They sold out a lot of the other ones, the smaller weighted stocks. But again, semis and all that stuff just held up better last week, even though Friday was like a bloodbath and stuff. And it's coming down to, you know, a demand zone. We'll see if they're going to try to break those lows over there and take that as liquidity first before moving back up. That's what we'll to find out. And we'll find out very quickly come tomorrow morning you know if this news and the fear mongering stuff come out of the middle east uh is going to affect it a lot or not it's going to shake it off and stuff and you know when you look again i highlight this same range you wouldn't think we're being in the same range in february after all these crazy volatile days but there we are and we're not even at the bottom of the range right not yet and so that would be breaking that 50 moving average like i said it's always a soap opera right but you know when we come over to nasdaq 100 Again, one thing to watch, you do have that weekly MACD bearish cross, okay? And we've seen some selling since this has happened, some red. And when this happens, especially on the weekly time frame, it's usually a pretty 
big deal, you know, and you usually do get a decent sell-off for the last four times this has happened at least when you go back, and it doesn't happen a lot because it's a weekly. I'm just going to go over the ones that are actually above the zero line on this one, but you can see each time it's happened, you know, you've had a decent sell down anywhere from 5 to 10%, somewhere in there, and so uh, because it is a higher time frame, it is more powerful to look at. And so we'll see if that, and it's not going to happen like all at once, guys. You can see even when it happened, I said, as soon as this crosses a couple weeks ago, you might see it move up first. Then we move down if, if that continues. And so, but I mean, it's, it's been a, a big run, right? And so a lot of consolidation uh, at the top and stuff. So we'll see if this is going to mean anything. I mean, you can see how far we're down right now, which is not much at all when you look at it. And when you go over the QQQ again, if that bearish MACD cross does continue to carry out, obviously the Qs will be affected. And when you look, there is a huge fair value gap down here. A four hour fair value gap would be a great aim as far as grabbing liquidity before trying to move up, if that's the case. I know a lot of people, what they're predicting is maybe a small sell down, move up to grab liquidity at the top before you get a bigger sell down in May, somewhere in that time range. So it's something we got to. Uh, keep in mind and stuff and again the 100 the 200 the, these moving averages are pretty far down there and so they're even below that four hour moving average so you know you got to keep that in mind looking at a you know i guess a bigger point of view if you're looking at as far as how far this thing can go and stuff and a few of the stops we're gonna look at right now and one of them is amd obviously it's been sitting on this what i call the precipice right here see if it's going to fall off this level it's held it quite well right but when you look at it, that white line down the bottom would be perfect for a real bounce. And that would put it, you know, down to fill a fair value gap, to fill an RTH gap. And so that would be probably about another 10% down if that's the case, because this is just one of those ones that's showed a lot of weakness recently, even with NVIDIA running up, some others running up. You know, this one would be basically red or flat on the day, as you can see. And so it's broke the 50. It's broke its uh, anchor VWAP for the year and stuff. And so that will be a really big bounce point to watch out for if that's the case. Again, you can see the momentum has really come down in this name right here. But it is a semiconductor, you know, so you're going to have AI pumps and all this good stuff coming up. They will have earnings coming up soon, right? And you can see it's sitting right there on that 100 moving average. And so we broke the 50. And now we're sitting on the 100. So looking at this, and I'll tell you another reason you might see a bounce in this, whether it's short-term, long-term, I don't know, is it loves to come down to that 50 Fibonacci level, which is at now, and that's from this whole move up when it went from like 94 to 228 bucks, which I believe was the high. So don't be surprised that 50 Fibonacci level can be very powerful. If it comes down to the white line, you'll get down in the golden pocket, even more of a discount where people love to buy and stuff. And so keep that in mind if you do happen to see a bounce. Now, some stocks that are extremely oversold are these right here. This is a whole list of you can pause and look at these right here. We're going to look at a couple of these, right? And so you got Boeing and then Lululemon uh, also to look at. But when you look at Lululemon, it's an interesting one. I know one of our members is looking at this one, which I posted some charts now this weekend. And when you look, look at these fibs. I mean, obviously, this thing has just been destroyed. I mean, literally like 35% drop right here. And this is when the market, a lot of stuff's been running up, right? Again, my wife doesn't shop here, thank God, because there's no way I pay this much for the kind of clothes they sell. It's amazing to me why people do it. But anyway, uh, it's a side note. But when you look, when it comes down into either the golden pocket, the 0.7 area, a major discount area, right? From when it started to run up, you usually do get a bounce. Let me adjust this from the last time. That's where it started to run up. So you're in a major discount area right here at 0.79 FIB level, right? You look at the last two times that had a decent sell-off, this is where you start coming to it, right? The golden pocket, the 0.79 area will get below. That's the 200 weekly moving average, by the way. We're on a weekly chart, and you can see we're below the 200 weekly now, right? We've come below the 200 weekly, hit that golden level, and then have a really nice bounce. Same thing over here. Come below, a nice big old sell-off over here uh, when the market's crashing in 2022. But again, this one rebound in the middle of the crash. It hit that 0.7 level, got below the 200 weekly, as you can see. And so, again, uh, that's where it's at now. We'll see if that is the case or not, and that's what's going to happen. Um, and so we'll see how this goes. And a couple other charts, when you look at this, if we pull up the volume profile on this thing, you can see it's getting in that area where there's a boatload of volume historically right here, right? So it's getting there. So it, should, it could have a little bit farther to go, you know, maybe 5 6% maybe. So it gets in that level, it mitigate that fair value gap right there which be a good bounce place for it to come back up. So you can see it's fall, falling right through that volume pocket right there. Also, what do you got here? This, be, this is almost the fourth touch on this ascending trend line, right? So just a lot of influence happening in this area for a bounce. 
and it does have a, a huge following. I mean, I know people that buy the clothes and stuff, and they just love it to death. So, you know, we'll see what happens on this one. Let me know what you think about it. Now, the other one's going to be Boeing. Obviously, you can see it's just in this formation here, expanding. It's getting down to the bottom of it. And, of course, with this news coming out, because this thing's had just horrible news. I mean, I was planning a vacation for the summer, and we were booking flights. I've never looked at who makes the planes. But I honestly was trying to avoid Boeing planes. I'm not like the only one, but I never looked at that before because they always have something going on. Like every week, seems like something's happening, right? But look at these names right here. Anything to do with these names, they obviously could pop not only tomorrow, but this week because of what's going on in the Middle East, right? This is how they make money and stuff. So, and people just tend to pile into these during these uh, kind of times. Now, I said that I'd put this on here for one of you guys who watch. You asked about this, about these stages. And FinTech, is it, they all look the same, but you see PayPal here. You know, to me, it's still in stage one, trying to break out into stage two, but you can see it's just a, still a decimated chart, right? Just absolutely decimated. Still has to set this newer high and stuff. And for those who know what I'm talking about, that is the 30 week moving average. This is a weekly chart, right? The stages are very simple. You have stage one, two, three, four. Some people call them phases. But what you're looking at here, let me bring up this right here, stage one, right? It's kind of just consolidating, trying to break out. Stage two is where you make your money. Stage three is where you get to the top, where it's like, oh boy, look at this right here. Stage four is the crash, okay? And you can see FinTech in general, especially PayPal, and I'm going to show you Square as well. Again, that to me is stage one, right? I still don't see a stage two. You look at Square, that's clearly a stage one. I mean, this thing has been setting sideways, but you can see the stages, and if you look to the left, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, right? And so that's what I'm talking about when I say stages, and FinTech's just been left behind. Now, when it comes to earnings, you got a boatload on them. Got more banks, a lot of banks this week. Uh, some on Monday and Tuesday, you have a whole lot more banks. You got Johnson and Johnson reporting as well. United Airlines is going to be reporting. Uh, now we're getting to find out on Wednesday, ASML will be your first like semiconductor stock to report. So watch that as well. Uh, Travelers, I think it's an insurance company. Uh, look at that one, Alcoa. Uh, okay, you have uh, Sands, Discover, CSX, Thursday. Here's Taiwan Semiconductors, our second semiconductor company, which is a very important one. Uh, so that's going to be a big one. A lot of people are watching out for DR Horton. Let me know how you're playing Taiwan Semiconductors, by the way. Uh, Netflix, which obviously had a huge year going on. Uh, and then Friday, you're going to have American Express, P&G, and some others as well. But a lot of regional banks as well are going to be reporting. So watch that. Now, economic news. You know, look at this right here. Monday, pretty much you got you know, really nothing. Retail sales, it's going to happen right before pre-market. So maybe that kind of moves you a little bit. Uh, besides that, not much. Tuesday, again, when it comes to red forward, it's going to be a lot less than it was last week. You'll have industrial and manufacturing data come out uh, right before the opening bell. You'll have a lot of you know smaller bill auctions going on as well. Wednesday, again, you know, you're looking at a 20-year bond auction at one. Besides that, not really any news is going to affect the market too much. Thursday, you'll have your jobless claims coming out. A lot of Philadelphia uh, Fed stuff going to uh, be talked about and everything. Uh, the prices, new orders, all that good stuff. We'll see if that affects the market. It's been ignoring that right now. Uh, then you get a lot of small bill auctions going on, a five-year tips auction going on. Friday, you have nothing going on. So you can see it's a lot lighter this week. It's really just going to be earnings volatility because those earnings, remember, a lot of them will affect the sector as a whole, right? So if one airline comes in and it looks terrible, could have to drag down the rest of them. If those semiconductors, that's the big one, come in like ASML or Taiwan semiconductors, especially, you know, people have big expectations, right? So that's what you got to look at because Taiwan semiconductors is going to be talking about the orders. Remember, they're making a lot of these, they, most, most of these chips actually. So that's the one I think everybody's going to be looking at. I think it's the most important one of the week, in my opinion. But let me know if you're playing any of those as well. So hopefully you got something out of it. Again, please hit that like and subscribe button your way out. And just buck up for tomorrow. We'll see how the market wants to react to the news and stuff going on in the Middle East and all that fun stuff. So anyway, hope you guys have a good one. And I'll see you tomorrow.